Hey folks, so I wanted to do a quick video on the advantage slash disadvantage snowball effect. You'll notice that people who already start off with advantages, like good looks, um, good health, especially looks though, uh, they there tends to be a snowball of easy access to more and more advantages, right? And OnlyFans is a great example of this, especially if you're female. Also, if you're a male though, as well, but especially as a female, um, this is seen. But even as a really good looking male or someone who would be considered advantaged in the looks department, it's so fucking easy for me to get stuff accomplished and make stuff happen and have people take seriously what I'm saying and wanting to do and everything else. A huge amount of that is based on looks. People being attracted to the way you look is a massive effect of that, you know, is a massive um, contributor to that happening. And I've seen it firsthand. You know, it's and I look at the situation, I see people who start off disadvantaged, right? If you start off in a situation with looks or challenged in the looks department in terms of not being attractive to a large number of people, right? You're always going to be attractive to somebody, but um, maybe not necessarily the person you're actually attracted to, right? So if you start off with disadvantages in the looks department or physiological department or behaviorally or whatever, if you have these quirks to you and stuff like that. Literally, what you experience is a snowball of those disadvantages, right? So it's like you start off with one disadvantage, which usually the looks thing, and it snowballs into further and further disadvantages, you know? So it is a real thing. I mean, it's it's an actual trend that goes on and happens. So it's like someone who starts off disadvantaged, they have to do a shit ton more work, like a shit ton more, to actually get anything accomplished and make stuff happen in their life, to spice up their appearance. It looks at, there's a lot more involved really. Like if you already start off in a way that's considered good looking doors will just open for you right and left legs will open right and left. It's like, it's a very easy, it's a piece of cake, right? Whereas if the looks are not there, then it's a snowball disadvantage, right? So like literally the person who has a snowball of disadvantages is literally trucking all the way uphill from the base. Whereas somebody who starts off with advantages, is basically rolling downhill practically starting off at the top and people can say if they look good and stuff, Oh yeah, but I face emotional challenges and this and that. Sure. Of course, everybody faces those, but don't act like it's as hard for you as it is for people who aren't good looking. Please don't act like that. Right. And no, I'm not talking about or encouraging the whole incel thing either. That's, that's a completely off the wall thing that people are adding to their own disadvantages and adding to the snowball of their disadvantages completely unnecessarily basically. In other words, going out of their way to make this caricature of themselves online. That's the more incel version than the, than the next guy, basically, right? A lot of that is more caricature culture than it is people actually seriously thinking or believing that. Really, a lot of that is actually a, um, it's an online joke culture, basically, or at least semi joke culture now. Um, you know, far beyond the initial, maybe people actually genuinely legitimately having issues or concerns is turned into a whole different beast entirely. Like from what it originally started off being about basically. Right. <clears throat> so, um, so if you start off with disadvantages and they're snowballing, don't add to the snowball yourself. Basically that's, that's like the worst thing you could ever do, obviously, but people do it because they just don't care really is what it comes down to you know, and they just, they've given into hopelessness and all sorts of other stuff. And it's like, well, if they've done that, there's really n nothing more that can be said, is there, you know, so they've got to decide when to unsnowball it in the wrong direction. But if you start off with advantages, you, you notice how comparatively speaking, how easy it is for you in life compared to people who don't have those disadvantages, isn't it? Right. And like, I've experienced it firsthand myself, and I'd be lying if I said my life wasn't a shit ton easier because of the looks, because people consider me good looking. That's specifically why things have gone a lot easier for me than they otherwise would have if that was not the case, right? So we're talking romance, we're talking friendships, we're talking opportunities to do stuff and have things happen, right? Uh, easy as cake. And just reach out and say, hey, I want to do this, make this happen. And it's pretty simple to get people to agree and want to be involved to various extents. Now, what's interesting too, another trend pattern I've noticed about that is no matter how many times I remind people that I've, I'm diagnosed with autism spectrum um, and need like a lots of recharge time alone, right? In private to um, recover after I've had social interactions, even with good friends and stuff like that. I just have to have the physical alone recharge time, right? 
no matter how many times I mention people that or remind them that I have this, it's like their brains literally forget that that's the case over and over and over again. So many times to where I'll have to like re explain that I need a low char- recharge time. And so, because it, so what I'm getting at is because of the looks thing, they automatically assume that, Oh, looks equals your advantage in all these ways. Therefore there's no possible way you could really actually be dealing with any actual mental challenges really. Right. And that's basically the conclusion that they have in their brains. And it's, what's interesting about that is on one hand, in terms of the interpersonal departments, that's true to a great extent. But on the other hand, in terms of your own private life and your own internal physiology, like what you need to be able to do in terms of recharge and refueling yourself, that's not something that people see visually, right? On your face or in your physiology. Uh, It's something you experience in private, right? So, but like if somebody's physically in the looks department, like disadvantaged, and they're not considered good looking by large numbers of people, they're going to more easily and more frequently remember especially if you have quirks about how you move or behave and stuff that you, Oh, this person is diagnosed on the autism spectrum or has this other issue that in other words, they're going to remember and they're going to associate your physiology and your appearance with something that's disabled or dysfunctional. Right. Whereas if you have the looks thing going, you have to literally remind people that you actually have a diagnosed disability because they forget all the time. Like is they, they don't recognize it. Right. Cause number one, you can mask it. And number two, it's like the looks themselves just overrule people's awareness of it. It's like good looks equals everything's perfect or our things are close to perfect basically, or ideal like subconsciously right in them when they're looking or perceiving you more or less. So it's like, uh, it's very fascinating. You know, it's like, it's amazing how many times I've experienced that where I've, I've known people for many years and it's like, they'll, they'll like, forget over and over that I've, I was ever diagnosed with a disability. So, which to me is fine. I, I mean, it's not like I don't identify myself as that or base my existence on it. But the fact is, it's just, it's interesting when I mention like, I need the extra recharge time alone time and stuff. And then people, it's like they, <laughs> it's like their brains have forgotten why I actually need that. It's, it's almost like, Oh, why do you need it again? Let's say, and it, and it is, you know what I'm saying? It's just really interesting that I've, I've, that pattern has been noticed in my life, basically. Um, so now what the other part to this is exactly to express this point though. Like if you have advantages in the looks department, you can pass off that you're completely functional top down, right, left and center in every aspect of your life and social interactions and face-to-face dynamics and stuff, just by showing up and appearing and interacting people will like assume that you're hunky dory and things are going smooth and you're everything is just fine for you. Right. They'll assume that because of the looks thing, it, it won't be, uh, it won't be a necessarily a reflection of what's actually going on, but my, that's exactly the point here. So those of you who may have mental disabilities or other issues or challenges, right? Depression, anxiety, whatever, but you have the looks working in your favor you really don't know what it's actually like to be someone who does not have the looks going in their favor. You really don't know what that's like. You just, you really don't. So please don't act like it's the same exact type of situation when it really isn't, you know, um, not to downplay your, your challenges or issues, but that's definitely not an issue you have if you have the looks going for you. So, um, so basically the point with this is you've, we as people who are considered good looking cannot use any kind of excuse as or claim as to, Oh, we have it as hard as people who are challenged. No, no, we don't. We don't have it as hard as them. We just don't. So please don't act like we do, you know, as a favor, if nothing else of acknowledgement to the people who are suffering far more than we are. Right. So it's like, at any point that you desire to just go about life as if you don't have issues or challenges internally, you can effectively pull that off with somebody who's considered as someone who's considered good looking, right? You can't really effectively pull that off if you're someone who's not considered good looking though, because you've got to number one, deal with your own in-house internal issues. And on top of that, you've got to do all this extra stuff to assist the way other people see you positively in an optimistic light, right? 
in terms of how you talk, how you show up, how you interact, how you do this, that, and the other. Um, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> when it comes to this, it's just, please understand that this challenge is very real for huge numbers of people. And if you're somebody who starts off advantaged, um, please do not ever talk down to someone or try to compare your situation with someone's situation who doesn't have the looks going for them. Right. Or at least who doesn't consider that they have the looks going for them or whatever. Right. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious to tell if somebody has looks that large numbers of people will find attractive. It's not a hard thing to detect. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying. Right. And this applies to males and females. I mean, males have this a lot harder because females, there's a much wider range of men finding women attractive than females finding men attractive in terms of uh, numbers. Right. So it's like, you only have to be even like marginally decent looking as a female to be attractive to huge numbers of men. Whereas if you're a dude, you have to notably be good looking to be attractive to large numbers of females, right? Via looks alone minus other factors, right? So, and those other factors are easier for you to acquire and practice and do because the looks will like fill in your gaps, Right. So if you like mess over making mistakes, the looks will like fill in any loose gaps you have. Whereas if you don't have the looks going for you, then you're pretty much screwed. And if you make a mistake, you're fucked and people will hound you on those little mistakes. Right. And just keep beating you down more and more. Right. As the corn song goes. So, uh, yes, I am a big fan of the band corn. Um, and I recently went to one of their concerts actually, but you know, I just hope this um, this awareness remains within the consciousness of people who already have advantages. So if you're somebody watching my channel and you've got things going for you in the looks department, please never under any circumstances compare your situation or your challenges or the difficulties you're facing to a person who does not have the looks going for them. You know, because it's really not even the same ballpark. It just isn't. It's not the same thing. You know, you may have all sorts of mental issues, sure, uh, stuff like that, traumas from the past, whatever that may be. But even then, you're still more advantaged in so many ways just by having a looks by themselves. You really are, you know. And really, from what I've observed in life, this is not me over-exaggerating this. And I, it, people who are very observant also would agree. This is not an over-exaggeration of this fact at all. This is very easily observable. Um People who have the looks, they get away with all sorts of shit. You know, the people who do not have the looks do not get away with, right? And Bleak Past did a really good video on this not too long ago. And others have done videos on a similar topic as well. So, no, I have nothing to do with the incel anything. This is not somebody complaining or pouting. I'm saying that I'm aware of the advantages that I've been blessed with. And I don't take those for granted. And I make sure to never compare my situation to the situation of someone who's suffering or in far more severe agony than I could ever imagine. Right. So keep this in mind and going forward, um, just really do appreciate what there is to be grateful for that, that you have advantage wise and do your best to help and assist those who are considered disadvantaged by number one, genuinely seeing the best in them, genuinely, uh, appreciating their value and genuinely liking them in a real sense. Right. And not basing so much on the appearance of an individual subconsciously or otherwise, you know? Um, and yeah, that's all for today. I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.